Thank Allah. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I hear you very good. Great, great. So, man, thanks again for, for taking the time to come to, to speak with me, man. I want to definitely, I had to had to speak with you, man, because uh, you on the front lines, man. You on the streets. A lot of people don't know that you were, you were mentoring Nipsey years before he blew up. You know, um, yes, so I want you to kind of, we're going to get into your story, get into your past, and um, also just talk about the, the impact that Nipsey has had on the community and where we stand, um, you know, one year later following his death. Um, so just start off, man, introduce yourself, let the people know who you are and what you represent. Brother Amir, I certainly appreciate this, my dear brother. Um, first, I want to say, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Uh, dear brother, I want you to also know in your listening audience that um, after the Nipsey Hussle murder and fiasco, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan came out to Los Angeles to be a part of his funeral at the request of his mother and brother. And during that time, he saw the impact that the nation has had in the Los Angeles area, and he gave me a new name. So my name is no longer Tony Muhammad. It's now Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. And Abdul means a servant of the people. Malik means one who settles the differences of others. And Saeed means a person whom people can trust and confide in. So it was an honor to get that name from him because I was sent here 25 years ago from Atlanta, Georgia. So I was born and raised in the South, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. I was a pretty decent athlete. Well, I was a good athlete. And I went to Morris Brown College where I played football and baseball and once leaving college, you know, I went into a lifestyle of, you know, bad dealings with drugs and had my little stint with that. And I met a brother in the nation when I was working at the airport in Atlanta, Georgia, who gave me a tape of Minister Farrakhan and I threw it away. <laughs> he gave me Mr. the Black Man. And when I opened the book and saw that it said the white man is the devil, I threw it away. And uh, I started dealing drugs, man. And one day, you know, brother re-brought me a tape. And the tape was... And he was speaking in Los Angeles. And that tape changed my life, brother. It was a message that I had been wanting to hear all my life as a youngster. And when I heard the minister drop the history on who the black man is and where we come from and, and that we are the chosen people of God, I knew it. I knew it, as a, I knew it as a child, but I never heard anyone say it the way he did. And so I'm listening to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and I decided at that time, I'm going to the nation. I stopped selling drugs. All my friends tripped. I joined the nation. And nine years later, he sends me to Los Angeles, the city that I heard him lecture that brought me into the nation. So that's a quick little snippet about who I am. And he said to me, brother, when you go to Los Angeles, I want you to spend time in the streets. I don't want you sitting in the mosque. He said, I'm sending you there because Allah God has blessed you with a spirit to unite people. And so that's what I've been doing for 25 years, man. Almost have lost my life several times, you know, just trying to unify the black man, trying to unify the black and the brown. And brother, we, it is beginning to happen like we've never experienced especially since Nipsey, and we could talk about that further. So that's me in short. Definitely, man. And, and I think you being in the streets, that kind of led you to Nipsey because, you know, of course, Nipsey was in the streets himself, but he was, you know, he was affiliated with the Crips, but he was also trying to uplift brothers, 
let me t talk about the first time you met Nipsey, because I know you guys did a lot of uh, drives and a lot of community things. When, were the, when was the first time you met Nipsey? Well, the first time I met Nipsey, it was at an event at Crenshaw High School where Trayvon Martin's mother and father came out to be honored by Black people in Los Angeles as a result of losing their son. And the gymnasium was packed with people. And uh, I didn't know Nipsey. And when I walked into the auditorium, um, Nipsey was speaking, and he stopped. And he said, oh, my God. He said, look, I see a man that we respect have come into the room. And then Nipsey started talking about his experience with me. He was 11 or 12 years old when one of his homies was murdered and I came to his community to console the mother of his murdered homie, not knowing Nipsey, he was a little boy watching me mm. and the nation. Wow. And, but the police came to try to break up a prayer vigil and I had to check the police and a fight ensued between the FOI and the police. Wow. And I was arrested, and, and they I was arrested, handcuffed, and the police started beating and kicking me in my face. And Nipsey and others, unbeknownst to me now, I don't know this, but he started talking about he was a child. He saw that, and that when he saw me almost give my life to their, their hood, he said that that stuck with him, and he always appreciated that. He never forgot it. I don't know none of this. So he mentioned that when I walked in the room. And at the end of the program, he ran over to me to shake my hand. Wow. And he said to me, brother, I've been watching the nation all my life. Hmm. Then he told me that's how I got the name Nipsey Hustle because my father would take me to the corner where the brothers were selling papers and pies and said, now that's how you hustle. Okay. <laughs> and that's when I took on the name Hustle. Wow. Then he said, I've been watching you on social media. He said, brother, I need a mentor. Will you mentor me? I said, are you kidding me, brother? Mm. I said, that's my job. Yeah. Not only would I mentor you, I mentor anyone you would like me to. And then he reminded me that he saw the documentary called Beef. Yeah. I don't know if you remember years ago when there was a beef between East Coast and West Coast rappers. I was blessed to gather all the West Coast rappers and East Coast rappers, and I took them to Minister Farrakhan, and they settled their beef. So mm -hmm. I was featured in that documentary. I'm in at least seven gang documentaries, and I'm known in the streets as Big Unk. Okay. They call me uncle. Because I can go anywhere by God's grace in the city of Los Angeles to any hood, and them brothers mm -hmm. will at least sit down and listen to me. Yeah. And and I honor that and I respect that. And that's how I got to know Nipsey. And then from that day, every three months, he would call me. Mm. I would recommend books for him to read. I would recommend how he should handle the hood, how he should, because he was troubled that he's now making this money. And how do I help the homies, minister? Because I can't pay all these in work. Yeah. I'm saying, no, brother. You don't give a man nothing. I said, create jobs. Yeah. Create opportunities for them. Make them work for it. I said, only a criminal wants something for nothing. Get them in exchange, brother. But don't don't give nobody nothing. Yeah. And he said, wow. I say, oh, hi, big homie. And I didn't know if he was listening or not because I don't pay attention. But my son kept telling me, man, do you realize who this is? I said, no. <laughs> he said, that's Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, because I didn't really listen to too much music because I'm always in the street, brother. Yes, I'm sir. Here. Yes, sir. And that's how me and brother, um, and I didn't, I'm going to be honest, I did not realize how big this young brother was until he was murdered. Man, let's, I mean, I want to. Because it didn't matter sure. to me, brother. You didn't, you didn't have to be no big dude or small dude. Yeah. I love black people. Yeah. I love the brown man. I didn't care. I done did almost 400 funerals. So it didn't matter to me who you was. I never did nothing to be recognized in the media because these homies don't play that. If they feel that you are using them to become known, they'll hurt you. Yeah. 
So I don't play, you know, with the street protocol, brother, because it's a matter of life and death. So I was honored to find out who this brother really is, man. And I couldn't stop crying because in truth, Nipsey was bigger than what we think he was. And I didn't know he was deeply spiritual. So that's how things materialize. Yeah, his, but man, wait till I his, tell you what's been happening since his death. One of his one of his his uh books that he recommended, one of his favorite books was a message to to the black man in America. Um uh, Yeah. So you know he yeah, he was yeah. he said that to T. I. Yeah. Um yeah, you're right. T I actually he 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 um he recommended that book to to T I. Absolutely. You know, brother, what I love about that brother, they see our work. And what I love about the streets, the streets don't go with the media hype because they see the brothers out in the street every day. They see us giving our life. They see us coming in between them and the police. And many of the brothers and gangs always say to me, man, if it, if it wasn't for this lifestyle I'm living or this weed I'm smoking, I'd come in the nation, but y'all don't play that. <laughs> no, but but no man no we ha we have a great relationship with the streets because i don't i hate self righteousness you know i like to keep it real and i never try to do anything with these brothers trying to get them to convert to islam man that's arrogance it ain't about uh converting to islam it's just about being a good brother Man, I want to talk about it, man, because I actually happened to be in L.A. tonight that, that uh, Nipsey, the untimely passing of Nipsey, and you and the brothers, man, the, 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 you guys were out in the street that, that same night. Why was it important for you guys to be a buffer between the police and the community? Because the police, they were scared. I, and I saw, the, I saw the cops down there in South, in South Central, right in front of the Marathon store, and they were scared of the community. But you guys, the Nation of Islam, you were a buffer between the streets and the police. Why was it important for you guys to play a role that night of his passing? Thank you, dear brother. Well, first of all, you know, the guidance from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, man, he has always told us and instructed us to be that buffer because we know that police officers all throughout this country, they are not trained to police our community in the proper manner. They're trained to hurt our people. They're trained to kill our people. And so therefore our people also, we suffer. We suffer the historical perspective of police, being policed by police officers, just the mere sight of their police uniform, their badge, their helmets, all of that keys us in. See, a policeman's uniform is to black people what a swastika is to the Jews. So knowing this, we knew we had to get out in the streets and put ourselves between the police and our people because they would, they would have delighted in just killing them. So mm -hmm. we are blessed that when we show up, it brings calm to our people and it really brings calm to the police. In fact, Brother Amir, when it first went down, there was a big vigil at yep. Nipsey's store. Yep, I Tens was out of there, thousands yep. of people were out there. I came and I spoke and I had to leave. But when I left, many of the brothers went with me. And maybe a couple of hours later, all hell broke loose. Yeah. So I get a call from the mayor. The mayor of Los Angeles called me when I'm at the mosque. And I already heard that a melee broke out. So we were organizing the FOI in Los Angeles to go back to the scene. But I get a call from the mayor and the chief of police literally begging me to mm. go back to the scene. And the mayor said these words as God is my witness. He said, Brother Muhammad, the city needs you. The police cannot handle it. Will you help us and go back to the scene? I said, hmm. are you serious, Mayor? I said, because we're on our way anyway, but I'm going to put you on speakerphone because I want all the brothers to hear you. Yeah. I said, say that again. He said, the only one that can deal with the black community in a situation like this is the nation of Islam and the city of Los Angeles will be indebted to you if you help. Wow. And I said to him, I said, does the chief agree? He said, I have him on the phone. 
So the chief of police, Chief Moore, said, Minister Muhammad, he said, I want you to know that I will put all of my men will take advice from you and your leadership. Wow. I said, I said, I want you to say that again. I said, because in the nation, we say our word is our bond. Mm -hmm. And he said it again. And I went and I, I assessed the situation, me and my regional captain, Brother Halim. And when we gave them advice on what we thought they should do, Brother Amir, I'd never seen nothing like this. Policemen taking orders from the nation of Islam. That blew me away. And when the homies saw that, they was like, damn, big on. No, I remember. You told them to move back and they moved that's... back. A helicopter I remember that. came I over. Remember. I said, get that. I said, Right. I said, get that helicopter out of here. Yeah. They pulled it out of there. The homies started going off. Damn, this yeah. nigga got juice. <laughs> yeah, I remember I, mean, I remember I remember vividly you guys telling the police to move back and them stepping back. Like that I never seen anything in my in my life. Like you guys were telling them to calm down and they would retreat once you guys would give them give them the order. Absolutely. And then but but don't give me we also had black antagonists. Okay. You know, some of our people want to start stuff. So we have to give balance to the story. So when we would see some of the antagonists, we would step over to the brothers and say, brothers, so if you start some with these police and they start killing these people, are you going to go to their family and let them know you started this? Yeah. Yeah. And then I, we would say to the black antagonists, now we're out here, brother. If you start something, get one of these people hurt, We'll wipe y'all out. So we had to bag them off at the same time, too, because, yes, the police have hurt our community. But we can't be no fool to want to go to war with them in a situation like this when there are men, women, and children out there. Yeah. And yeah. so we, we, had to, we had to fight two wars on two different fronts. And I want to thank the black antagonists because we had enough respect with them to where they too say, okay, Bob Muhammad, we don't want no issues with the nation, but we hate. with the nation, but we hate these pigs. I said, I got that. I, I ain't trying to interfere with that. I said, but don't start then while our babies are out here. For sure. And they, and they respected that. You guys bought, the minister, he flew in uh, a couple of days before the, the actual, uh, the home going service. So let's talk about it. And I know you, you kind of helped to, to facilitate the minister coming down to the marathon store. How did it, how did it all transpire? Well, it's when he, when Minister Farrakhan arrived, he was so, so touched by Nipsey's story. He didn't know Nipsey either. His, his children was explaining to him who Nipsey was and why we, you know, we should honor him. And when I met with Nipsey's mother and father and brother, you know, they, they, and I asked them, would you all like to have the minister? And the brother said, are you kidding me? You know, you know how we talk in the street. And I'm going to just say it the way he said. He said, man, my brother, fuck with y'all. Yeah. He loved a minister. Yeah. And we would be honored if he would come. And, and Minister Farrakhan spoke to his mother. Because Minister Farrakhan is not somebody who going to try to steal some light. He said, I will not come, brother, unless they say it's okay. And in fact, they requested him. But he, even when he said, no, I want them to tell me, I believe what you're saying. So I went to the home. They invited him. And um, the minister did not ask to speak. He didn't even find out he was speaking until he got here. He just wanted to be among the group honoring the life of Nipsey Hussle. So when he got here, the first thing he said, brother, take me to the store I want to get into the spirit of that man. Take me to ground zero. I want to see where his blood was spilled. 
he said, I, he said, because this is bigger than what we think. He said, I believe this was directed by higher powers and that the dude who did it may have been a patsy. Hmm. Wow. He said, because this young man was about to change the dynamic of his community and our enemy hates it when we start doing for self. Yes, sir. They don't like to see black enterprise. They don't like to see black businesses. And you know, Brother Amir, Brother Nipsey was involved in, in nearly a half a billion yep. dollar redevelopment project, yep. which would have put 1,200 people to work. see him do that because once you go into business you've entered into another war so the minister wanted to come he said i want to feel the pain of the environment man that's the kind of man he is and when he showed up at ground zero brother the people couldn't believe it yeah it's like wow man nipsey gotta be something far concave yeah yeah and that when the minister got there he thought you, you know, he he started getting choked up. He said, I, I feel this, brother. He said, this man is more than what we think. And then when we told the minister what his name was, the minister automatically knew in, in Eurotra what his name meant. He said, ah, this is interesting. Mm. So that's how the minister, ground zero, brother, he loves the people, man. You can't keep Minister Farrakhan from the people. He ain't no ordinary leader some Negro trying to wave and people, no, nah, he came to serve. And when he spoke to those thousands of people, they were touched, man. So brother, um, no, man, and that's how it happened. And then he looked at me and he said, brother, I think this brother's death is going to do what Tupac and Biggie's death started. But I think his death is going to finish it. Wow. And I looked at him. I said, what do you mean? He said, brother, the streets of L.A. is about to unite. Mm. He said, there is a scripture that talks about the sun rising in the west in the last day. He said, and whatever L.A. do, Chicago, the streets of Chicago is going to do. New York is going to do it. Atlanta. He said, look at how this brother's life touched all them cities. And so he also learned that Nipsey, before he was murdered, Nipsey got hundreds of thousands of dollars of jewelry, got on a bus, Brother Amir, and he went to over 20 different neighborhoods that hate the rolling 60s. And he offered his life. Mm. And when the minister heard that, he said, ah, that's why he named his son Cross. Because he knew he was on a cross. Oh, wow. And he went and offered his life saying, homies, y'all can take my life if we stop all this beefing. We need to stop this. And when the minister heard that, he said, brother, that man is a Christ-like. That man went and, and not one hood took his life. In fact, they started calling the big homies from his hood saying, hey, man, y'all homeboy, homie is over here telling us to kill him if we would stop beefing with y'all. And they didn't do it. Mm. And it ended up being a Judas in his own hood. I want to talk about... That's why no war didn't break out. I want to talk about how the gangs came together. I'm talking about gangs who had beef for, for decades, you know, days after Whoa. Nipsey passed. And you guys are still on the front line of that, bringing the peace together between different gangs. Talk about how, you know, how all that was facilitated with, with rival gangs coming together in L.A. Yeah, well... I, I want to be honest. Yeah, thank you. Brother, there's so many of us. It ain't just a nation. I, want your, I don't want nobody who's listening. No, it's a collaborating effort from a lot of people, brother. You got, you got some beautiful brothers and sisters that work in gang intervention have been doing it with me for years. So it's almost like we've been sowing the seed for 25 years. Brothers, we got to come together. You know, so 
There are other groups that are out there, Ceasefire, Unity One, Unity Two, Second Chance, you know, you, you got girls and gangs. And so when Nipsey was murdered, we never seen this. Everybody started bringing candles. People started bringing flowers. The next thing you know, I'm getting calls from different hoods. Brother Muhammad, do you think it'd be cool if we come? Other gang members saying, can we come? So we went to the rolling 60s to say, look, brothers, is it okay if the groups come? Now, the only group that did not call that I know was the a Tray Gangsters. The a Tray Gangsters and the Rolling 60s had the bloodiest war of any black gangs in all of the Los Angeles area. 40-year war. So they gave the okay, brother, we saw over 400. Now, it's 1,500 hoods. Mm. We saw over 400 hoods show up. Then we got the word that the a Trey Gangsters showed up. Wow. So everybody went over to the parking lot. Mothers went over to the parking lot. And when they saw the a Trey Gangsters in the rolling 60s went to confront them, and when I say confront, not negatively, we thought a war was going to break out. And they, they looked at each other, brother, and they hugged. Oh, wow. Man, what a dry eye in the house, brother Amir. Wow. I mean, we were crying like brother. I mean, mothers was just like crying, saying, you all, this is what we've been wanting. And then the a Trey Gangsters and the Rolling Sixties walked up to the marathon. Man, that sent chills to all of L.A. And hmm. after that day, almost every hood came over the next day when We The Nation had a big memorial for, for Nipsey. I mean, the Samoan gangs, the Mexican gangs. Uh, I mean, brother, they came. I mean, the Asian gangs. We never seen it. All of them dropping their rags saying, it's over, man. We got to find a way to come together. And that's how it happened. It was almost like everybody was saying they were sick of it. Wow. This is it. This man was, and his music ascended hood. Hmm. Because he was on that, you know, he had a piece with, Kendrick, he had a piece with other uh, uh, Pyrus out of Compton. Yeah. Nipsey was done with gangbanging, man. He said, I want to change it. And he was going to be doing a peace ride with us that I've been doing yeah. every yeah. month for almost 10 years. I want to talk for, for I want to hold So that's part. how it happened. I want to talk about that peace ride because people, that, that, a lot of people don't know that you guys, every, it was, is it certain Sundays um, out of the month, you guys ride. Uh, it's the fourth Sunday of every fourth month. Sunday. Okay, so talk about the fourth Sunday of every month for 10 years. And Before we talk about that, I want to say this. I got to tell you about this something, this big thing that happened a few months ago. Okay. About a few months, maybe four months ago, when the, the, I'm just talking about the momentum and the movement of this thing. Um, the East Coast Crips have been in a 20-year war with the Florencia 13. Okay. The Florencia is a Mexican gang. The bloodiest gang war between black and brown. That's one of them. It's the longest. The 13th Street Florencia gangs, one of the Mexican mafia bosses from his cell, brother, reached out to me so we are having a meeting now in the meeting all the bloods all the crips who was at war we've been meeting with them working out uh, their problems you know and they all said look it's over i'm talking about bloods crip on crip blood on blood everybody coming in our room with me and others putting their rags in the ring saying it's over it was so moving that it got out to the Mexican games. Mm. So we get a call from the Florencia 13th that's been fighting with the East Coast Crips and this brother named Doc, man. Doc is the East Coast Crip, very reputable brother. And he called a meeting between the Florencias and their hood. I was there. When I walked in the room, 
one of the Mexican mobs came up to me and gave me the phone, and it was Balboa, the Mexican mafia boss from prison. Wow. This <laughs> dude is talking to me on FaceTime from prison under his sheet. Wow. He said, brother, I want you to know we have always respected Farrakhan and the nation. He said, and I just came out of the hole for 20 years. And I realized that nobody is winning. And he said, I, I wanted to do this in front of you and the nation because we trust y'all get down. We trust that y'all, you know, don't choose sides and will help bring this thing together. He said, and, and Brother Muhammad, I've been watching you for years and I want to thank you for what you've done. Now, I'm, I'm beginning to tear up because I know how big this is. Now, I got a room full of Mexicans and a room full of East Coast Crips that's looking like they about to go to war. Then he said, turn the phone around to all my homies. And that's when he made the announcement. He said, no more Mexicans killing blacks. Mm. And his young homies looked. He said, did y'all hear me? And they all said, yes, sir. Because, you know, Mexicans got a different get down. Yeah. They got a different kind of protocol. Let's so know. when the Mexican mob boss say something, they all capitulate. Yeah. And then so now the East Coast Crips, when they heard him say that, they then echoed the same thing. Then it's over. Mm. So we had to set some rules in place on how, how to enforce this. So we came up with some simple little rules. Man, we watched these cats go through the eight steps of atonement in a street way. Oh, wow. it, it was amazing, man. You know, and let me tell you, so the entire east side of Los Angeles We've seen such a drop in violent crimes between gangs. We've never seen this before. All of this is on the heels of a movement that was started by the murder of Nipsey. This is why, brother, that brother is more powerful in death mm. than he was living. Wow. Because now the whole community is healing. I, we've never seen gang members. Now, look, we could get gang members to come together, but they've never reached. Now they're reaching. We want mm. in. Mm. Is, it, is it pretty? Now, you, you got to be real strong <laughs> when you're bringing these homies together so. because they get keyed in and they want to fight. And so a week went by. So there was an emergency meeting between the Mexicans and the East Coast Crips. So they came in the room, and the East Coast Crips were saying, man, y'all MFs came through our hood, man, and we don't like that. And them niggas, they throwing signs. Mm -hmm. So the big Mexican mafia dude said, well, did anybody shoot? Nah. Well, they were supposed to shoot you. Don't you see we making progress? Mm. Okay. And everybody's like, damn, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So rules. So then they said, okay, no more going through hoods, throwing up games. No more tagging. See? So rules are being set. See, first thing, the minister, Minister Farrakhan said, brother, the first thing in the universe was motion. The second thing was order. And I said, so brother, now that this is in motion, we're going to have to put order to it as we go. So they start making up rules. And everybody seems to be following the rules, man. It is and it, it is remarkable. The only thing we have to be careful of is the police who don't like it, who try to keep stuff going. And when I say police, I'm talking about rogue police because all police ain't bad. But there is a bunch of rogue cops who always want to keep crap going. And so, brother, we, we've never experienced this. And now the city of Los Angeles is going to be working with me because we're going to finish out by God's grace some of the projects that Nipsey had on the drawing board where now we've gotten the city and we've gotten the developers to agree that they would put up the money to train all of the gang members no matter what their criminal record is they'll be trained in the 17 construction trades wow. and their record will not be held against them to get jobs God willing, we're going to be implementing that in June of this year. Wow, man, that's a that's a blessing, man. And all and all of this, all of this has transpired in the last year. Absolutely, I mean, job training where they're going to get paid. 
they're going to get paid about $20 an hour just to learn to be a plumber. While they're being training, they're going to get paid. And once they get their apprenticeship, they can make upwards to $100,000, a six-figure salary a year. Yeah. So we're putting protocols in places now to train brothers in those areas. But there are other types of jobs. Nipsey was into coding. Nipsey was into cryptocurrency. We're going to be teaching brothers how cryptocurrency work. We're going to teach them how to code where they can come up with their own apps. Because Nipsey wanted to shorten the digital divide. So we're going to set up a whole school for youngsters to learn coding. Wow. In this Nipsey's amazing. name. This, this is amazing, man. No, that, brother. You know, his legacy is still continuing. And you guys are, are kind of helping to facilitate, um, you know, walking through the communities today, man. Is you know, what's what is it, what is it like for the for the young for the next generation? Because I know it's some young young kids. They still see the bangers. What what are they doing? What's what what are their goals right now after after this after the passing of Nipsey? Do you see more hope in the in the younger guys and the younger girls out there? Absolutely, because those are the ones now that are being introduced to people like the nation and others. They're seeing this for themselves because they were very touched by Nipsey. And many of them now is going online and looking at Nipsey's, his interviews. Many of them didn't know he was talking like that. And so um, we still have our issues, but I've never seen an interest and young people wanting to do something better with their lives. And here's what I always say to them, Brother Amir. I say, brother, if we could show your ancestors, if we could show you a way to make money without killing each other, would you be interested? They say, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're putting in place. I don't make false promises. So I say to them, well, when I got something, brother, we'll be back. But until then, don't let that cause you to want to kill your brother. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, we saw the females. The many people don't know, we now, the biggest problem in Los Angeles was the growth of black and brown female gangs. Okay. We saw them come together in Nipsey's name. I got all of this. I got footage. I have never put it out. We have footage of females who came together in the name of Nipsey and this movement. It's now we formed something called the United Hood Nation. We're going to be the replica of the UN to where now these girls came together and said, we need to settle our differences too, because y'all know we are the ones who kick this shit off. Mm -hmm. This is how they talk. Mm -hmm. And they do. Most of this banging is because of some female. And when we saw them settle their difference, Man, all the big homies, the brothers was crying, watching the females. Because in that room was a female who had her arm broke in three places. And the sisters who did it were sitting across from her. Mm. And they all embraced the process of atonement, man. It, it is something is happening in L.A. We ain't never, ever seen. So it's not just with men. It's women too, brother, because these sisters ain't no joke out here. And we just thank God. So now the city is backing us. Um, we're putting things in place to get them jobs, to get them to consider other things. We're getting ready to uh, have uh, what we're, we're right now. We're organizing what we're going to be calling United in Peace Day LA, where we, we're going to get the Coliseum and we're going to have the biggest day of edutainment where we're going to celebrate all of this peace that we see happening between gang members and we're going to be asking the top artists jay-z beyonce we're going to be asking snoop we're going to be asking kendrick lamar we want to honor all the mothers and the families who've lost children to gang violence which is over thirty thousand wow. in the last 15 years uh. and so We've already gotten commitments from many of the artists that, Minister, once you get that day, we're going to be there. And we have a commitment from over 3,000 gang members. They're going to take flowers and give it to the mothers who've lost their children to gang violence. And then many of the gang members are going to come to the stage and ask for forgiveness. Mm. When I said that, Snoop said, brother, when they do that, Snoop said, I'm going to ask all of the 
rappers, all of the hip hop artists, we're going to come behind the gang members and we're going to ask we're going to ask for forgiveness from our lyrics that added to this. Yes, sir. I started crying, man, when yes, Snoop sir. said that to me. Mm -hmm. So we see something, brother, and we're asking the entertainers. We're saying, brother, invest in your community. We're asking the basketball players, the football players, man. Y'all pull your monies together as Minister Farrakhan has instructed us. Pull your resources. Open factories. Open grocery stores. And put these homies to work. Mm. And now many of them are considering doing that. And so that's, we're in the talking stage right now, brother, but I pray that we're able, because we have enough wealth among our entertainers and our athletes that we can resolve job problems in every major city in America. I want to, one thing that, that, that Nipsey talked about before his passing was gentrification and, and a lot of those neighborhoods down there becoming gentrified. How did you guys hold on to the essence of uh, that Crenshaw area, South Central Los Angeles, and make sure that it stays black, that it stays black owned, uh, whether, whether it's business or home ownership. How do you make sure that gentrification doesn't take over those neighborhoods? Well, we're, we're working on a Nipsey Hustle law. And two things have to happen. Number one, brother, we, we have to understand the value of what we have ourselves. Now, I can't tell black people not to sell their houses. You see, we don't understand the value. His brother and just you know some lasting words man just the impact of, of, of Nipsey and, and just you being a part of this whole movement man how does it feel personally to know that you know that you along with Nipsey and, and, a hundred, and a million other soldiers are out in the street every day how does it feel to be a part of this movement well brother it, it's such a blessing to be following a man like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because because of his guidance, I found my purpose. And there's nothing more powerful, brother, than somebody when you really find what your true purpose is. There's nothing like it. It's such an honor to serve black people, brother, to serve oppressed people. It's such an honor of settling difference between black gangs and brown gangs and people of color. Brother, there's no money that will give you the joy that you get in your heart when you see two homies who've been killing each other, their hoods for years, and they embrace. Ain't no money, ain't enough money to give you that kind of feeling. Because I now know from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I know that black people and oppressed people in America are the chosen people of God. We just don't know. And when you heal some of their wounds and you feed them, in the way that we've been feeding, it opens them up to wanting to know more about themselves. This for me, brother, what Minister Farrakhan gave me to do for him, it is the greatest feeling in the world, brother. I can go to my grave because all I've ever wanted to be is a good brother. 
And I'm now making up for some of the damage I did to my community by selling drugs, by mistreating women. I've always promised God that if he guided me, I would work for the rest of my life to bring together his people and serve black people and oppress people. And when I say oppress, I'm talking about the black, the brown, the red, and the yellow. And I tell you, brother, it, it's what I gave my life to. And my children understand. My son is an entertainer. My son is on a song with Nipsey. I didn't even know <laughs> my son and Nipsey was doing music together. So it's a joy, uh, dear brother. And I'm telling you, y'all about to see something by God's grace happen in Los Angeles that we've never seen. And when we do it here, the gang members in Los Angeles have already agreed that we are going to take a contingent of gang members from L.A. and fly them into Chicago. And they want to sit with the gang members in Chicago to tell them why they should stop banging. Mm -hmm. Then when we settle that, we're going to take L.A., Chicago. We want to fly into New York, Philadelphia. Every major city, we're going to let the gang members talk to gang members, man. Yes, sir. Let them yeah. spread the love, brother. It's about to be a movement, Brother Amir. And I'm telling you, man, I'm so honored that we got journalists like you. And hopefully uh, Rolling Out magazine will be right on the scene reporting the truth. So that's my charge from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And he said, brother, you've started something here. And this will move to every major city in America. And that's my goal. Find people like me in other cities. Not try to go in that city. They already got people like me there. We just want to hook up. And, I'm t and I'll close with this, brother. As I'm watching us settle all of these differences, Minister Farrakhan said to me, brother, you'll find out that the biggest enemy to our rise is not the white man. He said the biggest enemy to the rise of the black man is our ignorance. And from our ignorance, Envy and jealousy. Wow. See? Wow. If we could lose ignorance and if we could stop being envious, brother Amir got a talent. I wish I had that talent. Why bring him down? Because he's exercising his talent. Yes, sir. And so he said to me, brother, the bigger you get, you're going to have an enemy on that other level. Stay humble. Mm. Because there are going to be people that hate to see you and the nation bringing our people together. And we say that everywhere we go. And the homie said, Minister, you're right. And so it's an honor, brother, to be a part of a movement that I think is going to bring young people together like we've never had before. So I thank you, Brother Amir, for uh, this brief conversation, man. And I'll be back and I'll keep you posted. There's some things okay. I'm not going to talk about. For sure. But I'll keep you posted. And once we have things in hand and solid, I'll talk to you more about what we're about to do. But I'm not going to say too much now because I know the enemy will move against. Oh yeah, yeah, we got We got You know, we don't want to. We don't want to let it out too <laughs> soon because they'll definitely try to move on you. That's why I got on the marathon. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. A I marathon. see you. I see you. <laughs> how, how can people get in contact with you, man? Because you know, it's a pe we got people from a, from around the world watching right now, and they might want to, you know, pull your ear in and. Just get some, just for some advice, man, because you you always give great advice. How can people get in contact with you? Well, people can certainly get in contact to me through my Instagram page at Mintoni Muhammad, and that that's really the biggest way. Just inbox me what whatever um, you need, whatever you want. If I can facilitate it, um, anybody that has ever tried to reach out for me through Instagram will tell you I don't care how long it takes. I, I reach back out. So I would say if you're on Instagram, you can reach me that way. Or you can email me. My email address is mintony, M-I-N-T-O-N-Y, Muhammad, at AOL.com. Um, you can reach me that way. And, and so, you know, just let me know. If you're in Chicago, if you're in New York, I want you to know um, we're coming. We're going to do a tour where we're going to be taking many of the reputable gang members, man, to meet with the homies in Chicago, New York, Philly, 
So that's about to happen, God willing, within the next year. So thank you, Brother Amir, for all you do for our community. And thank you for having this conversation with me. Long live the spirit of Brother Nipsey Hussle. Well, thank you again. And before I let you go, I want to give you a preach. got Trap History. The book is coming out. Uh, History of Trap Music. Want everybody to know about that, traphistory.com. That's got right. Some, that's right, man. So, we, you know, we want to educate people, you know, ownership is about education. Let people know, man. That's that's the, that's the why me and you vibe, man. So I, I appreciate you for taking the time out 